From NPR News, this is All Things Considered. I'm Robert Siegel. And I'm Audie Cornish. In this part of the program, a story of faith and the loss of it. Imagine being a minister and realizing you no longer believe in God. Your worldview, your friends, your community, your career, all suddenly in jeopardy. NPR's Barbara Bradley Haggerty introduces us to one minister in the Bible Belt who traveled the lonely road from faith to non-belief. Teresa McBain has a secret, one she's terrified to reveal. I'm currently an active pastor, and I'm also an atheist. She glances nervously around the room. It's a Sunday. Normally, she'd be preaching at her church in Tallahassee, Florida. But here she is, sneaking away to the American Atheist Convention. I live a double life. feel pretty good on Monday, but by Thursday, when Sunday's right around the corner, I start having... Stomach aches, headaches, just knowing that I got to stand up and say things that I no longer believe in and portray myself in a way that's, that's totally false. It's taking a toll. Two sermons every Sunday, singing hymns, praying for the sick, week after week. Her iPhone has become her confessor. On my way to church again, another Sunday. Man, it's getting worse. McBain made this recording in her car on the way to Lake Jackson United Methodist Church. It was weeks before the Atheist Conference. How did I get myself in this mess? Sometimes I think to myself, if I could just go back a few years and not ask the questions and just be one of those sheep and blindly follow, not know the truth, it would be so much easier. Just keep my job. But I can't do that. I know it's a lie. I know it's false. 44 year old Teresa McBain was raised a conservative Southern Baptist. Her dad was a pastor. She felt the call of God when she was six. She had questions, of course, about conflicts in the Bible or the role of women, but she set her concerns aside. When she became a United Methodist pastor nine years ago, she started asking sharper questions. She thought they'd make her faith stronger. In reality, as I worked through them, I found that religion had so many holes in it that I I just progressed through stages where I couldn't believe it. The questions haunted her. Is Jesus the only way to God? Would a loving God torment people for eternity? Is there any evidence of God at all? And one day... I just kind of realized, I mean, just a eureka moment, not an epiphany, but a eureka moment... I'm an atheist. I don't believe. And in the moment that I, I, I uttered that word, I, I stumbled and choked on that word atheist. But it felt right. Online, McBain found The Clergy Project, an anonymous community of clergy who have lost their faith. Now she had allies, but no easy escape. She began applying for jobs. People would ask, why did she want to leave ministry? She worried about this as she drove around. She didn't know what to say. So what the hell am I supposed to do? I mean, really, the options are work at something like Starbucks or McDonald's, and even there, they're going to ask those questions. And I could even clean houses and not make a great amount of money, but at least nobody would be asking me questions. One Sunday, on her way to church, McBain realized she could no longer bear her double life. i got to come out. i got to get out of it. It used to terrify me of what people's reaction would be, but it's been so long now, and I've done this for so long, I don't even care. The sermon she gave that day was her last. I'm here at the American Atheist Convention, where in just about two and a half hours, I will be standing before a group sharing my story and coming out officially as an atheist. March 26th. Bethesda, Maryland. McBain seems almost giddy. She is still undercover. I, I'm nervous, so, uh, but at the same time, I'm so excited. Um, I slept like a baby last night because I knew I wasn't going to have to live a lie anymore. Such freedom. Please come up. My name is Teresa. I'm a pastor currently serving a Methodist church, at least up to this point. (laughs) And I am an atheist. (laughs) 
The 1,500 people jump to their feet. They hoot and clap for more than a minute. McBain then apologizes to them for being, as she put it, a hater. You were just those people, and I was the one on the right track, and you were the ones that were going to burn in hell. And I'm happy to say as I stand before you right now, I'm going to burn with you. <laughs> Hi, Teresa. Hey, My name's Randy. Hey, Randy. Yeah. I got to tell you, that was one of the most moving things I've seen in years. I was getting choked up. I was a born-again Christian up until three months ago, so yeah. join the club. I have never felt so appreciated and cared for. You know? new, new member, just been born. That's what it feels like. Two days later, McBain returned to Tallahassee, to reality. I didn't know how far or how explosive her coming out would be. But again, again nobody did. McBain's husband, Ray. The next morning we got up, I went to work, and my son Alex texted me and said it went viral. And that's when the local TV channel took it. A local minister stepped down from her post just before announcing she is an atheist. A member of Lake By the time I got to the TV channel, there was 500-something comments. The majority of them, to begin with, were pretty hateful. For somebody who's been a good guy their whole life and been a people pleaser, it's really hard to imagine that overnight you're the bad guy. McBain tried to see the church's district superintendent to explain, but he canceled the meeting. She left town briefly, and there, sitting alone in her hotel room, she turned on the iPhone. So I'm sitting in Seattle, it's Sunday, April the 1st. I found out that the church has locked me out, that they're holding a secret meeting that I'm not supposed to know about. Man, I don't want to go home. I don't want to have to be in Publix or Walmart or somewhere and worry about who's going to see me and who's going to corner me and just tell me off. But she did go home. People shunned her. Job interviews were canceled. Only two friends called on her. But her family was a refuge, even if they didn't all agree. I believe in God, and uh, to be honest, I pray for her every night. I got friends praying for her. Ray McBain says he adores his wife and defends her right to disbelieve. That's why I spent 23 years in the Army. That's why I'm still a police officer. We have freedom of speech and freedom of thought. And God never forced anybody to believe. So who am I to step up? I wanted to see the church at the center of her story. So I asked McBain to take me for a drive. It's Sunday morning. Okay, here's the church coming up on the right. Um, and we should have a fairly uh, decent sized crowd. We can't get in the parking lot, but we can at least loop around closer. Does this make you a little nervous? Yeah, yeah. I have butterflies. This is the first time McBain has seen her church since she went public. It's 11.20, nearly time for the sermon. McBain's glad she's not inside. Not because of the people or anything, but because if I were in there, I know what I would be doing, and that would be standing up and proclaiming something that, that I no longer believe in. So, yeah, I'm relieved that I don't have to do that. She wants to leave before anyone sees us. Let's see which way is the easiest to go. Later, at home, I ask her, what do you miss? I miss the music. Music has been a part of my life for a long time, and um, some of the hymns, I'll still catch myself singing them. I mean, they're, they're beautiful pieces of music. And I miss the relationships. So, yeah, I do miss that. And I miss the ritual and the regularity of it. It's what I know. It's what I knew. And I still struggle with it. Life is just different. I don't hear you say that you miss God. Uh, no. No. I, I can't say that I do. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. 
From now on, Teresa McBain says, she's on her own. Barbara Bradley Haggerty, NPR News. I will,